Hey, Joe here. My latest project focuses on external control of the ER301. I got some good results, so I thought I'd shoot a video and share a demo and some reflections with the community. In this project, I've implemented extensive control over the ER301 patch using the Endorphin Shuttle Control, which itself is being controlled by a lemur template on my iPad. First, let's take a look at the ER301 patch, which is a drum synthesizer. The drum synth isn't necessarily intended to be triggered in a track or a song, but rather it was intended for designing drum sounds that can be recorded later and sliced and sequenced using one of the sampler units. It has three voices, a noise voice, a sine voice, and an FM voice. I also have uh, a couple of effects units after for further shaping. I won't take the time in this video to exhaustively cover the drum synth. I still have a little work I want to do on it. Maybe I'll do that in a future video or post the patch if there's interest. The key thing to know here is that many of its parameters, for example, uh, the attack and decay of the amp envelopes for each voice are under external control. Let's take a look at the ADSR envelope on the linear VCA controlling the amplitude of the sine voice. You can see here I have the attack assigned to A1 and the decay assigned to B2, A2, and B2. Uh, in all, I have 16 parameters mapped to the ER301's inputs and I have them exposed for external control via the lemur template by way of the endorphin shuttle control. Next, let's briefly examine the shuttle control configuration. The shuttle control has a USB MIDI input that can be connected to a MIDI host or device. In this case, it's connected to a device, my iPad. The shuttle control listens to MIDI messages and is really flexible about the way it converts them to CV outputs. It's highly configurable, and it has presets to store different configurations. In this case, my preset is pretty straightforward. It's listening to 16 different continuous controller messages, or CCs, which are being sent from the Lamer app, and sending a CV out to a different jack for each CC. The shuttle control is configured using this web MIDI interface. Since I had a pretty good idea of what I wanted to do here, I configured this preset in advance, and now it's stored in the non-volatile memory on the shuttle control. It only took a couple of minutes, and the configuration persists power cycles now. Now let's take a look at the lemur template. I'm sure you're starting to see the big picture now. The sliders, knobs, and buttons on this template are sending values as MIDI CC messages to the shuttle control. Those messages are converted to CV signals and in turn patched to the ER301's inputs and controlling the various parameters. Lemur includes a template editor for PC and Mac, but here I found it more convenient to use the in-app editor in the iPad to create the template at the same time I was creating the drum synth on the ER301. That allowed me to make real-time decisions about which parameters to, to, to control as well as test them on the fly. Even though it might look kind of daunting, creating the template elements was really pretty quick and easy. Once a particular element, like a fader, is in place, it's really as easy as copy and paste. And then you can change the label, the CC number, you can drag it around to a different position and change the color if you want to. I'm going to stop talking for a minute or two now and do a live demo of the template controlling the ER301 to make a drum sound or two. You can see and hear for yourself what you think about this setup. When I'm finished, I'll come back and share my observations and conclusions. Oh, the button here on the top right was intended to fire a gate signal to the amp envelopes in the ER301 to trigger the sound. It does work well, but in practice, I found it much more convenient to have the sound repeatedly triggered by a sequencer while shaping the sound to free up my hands. So I'll be using an Arturia Beat Step Pro to do just that.
so, a few reflections after setting this project up. First, external control of the ER301 with a lemur template is awesome. The UI design of the 301 is truly brilliant, and it's very fast and fluid to navigate using the built-in UI. But even so, the 301 is very powerful, and it's obviously possible to build chains that are quite a few layers deep. As fast as it is to navigate through the 301, I still found it a huge benefit in this case to have some of the key parameters available for adjustment outside the box, where they can all be viewed and accessed in one place without any additional navigation, and to have them arranged in a way that makes sense to me and have them clearly labeled. Second, I ate up 16 channels of CV control a lot more quickly than I thought I would. There are still some additional parameters in the strum synth that I'd like to put under CV control, and I'm out of channels on the shuttle control. The 301 still has a few ends to spare, though. So I think it's important to pick and choose. For example, I have the overall mix level of each voice under CV control. I think I could free those up and control them directly from the 301 here. Each voice is contained in a mixer channel on the top level of the chain, so they are very accessible without navigating down into the patch. Another example here are the attack parameters. Since these are drum sounds, I haven't really been adjusting them much at all. A super fast attack is always what I want. So these controls could probably be repurposed to control something more meaningful. Also, I think it's good to choose and pick the uh, control sources carefully. The prime example I'm thinking about here is the FM modulation index control. Shuttle control is taking its cues from MIDI. Even though you can't necessarily hear it because the shuttle control does what it calls CC smoothing, the MIDI is actually limiting the CV to 128 discrete voltages. In the case of an FM index, I'm sure I'm probably missing a lot of nice sweet spots here. This particular control would probably be better suited for a true analog offset input, like from my frames or maths. I might even go so far as to stage that input to have a coarse and fine control. For other parameters like decay, I'm finding 128 step voltages is just fine. Overall, I think this project was a good success. When I first began, it maybe seemed a little bit daunting, like it might be pretty time consuming to set up, maybe even a little intimidating. It really wasn't. It was pretty quick and easy to set up. It's a little bit of extra effort to set up the lemur template, but overall, I felt like the return on investment in terms of fast access to sound design parameters was well worth it, at least for a project like this one. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching. I'll be interested to hear your thoughts. Take care.